I'm Ryan with the Caribbean Castaways. And before we jump into today's video, I wanna tell you guys all about the Caribbean Preferred card. This card will give you the keys to the Caribbean. It will give you access to huge discounts on hotels, restaurants, tours, charters, and even online shopping. So if you're looking to save hundreds on your next Caribbean vacation, grab a Caribbean Preferred card today at caribbeancastaways.com slash card. Thank you, cheers. Hey Castaways, today we're taking you south in our own home state, all the way south to the beautiful island of... Key West. That's right, one of our favorite destinations. And we're going to be giving you our recommendations on the best places to stay. Yes, we're going to tell you places where we've actually been that we've loved. And we're going to tell you some places that are on our wish list that we would love to stay. That's right. So if you love Key West, you're going to love today's episode. So let's get to it. I'm ready. <laughs> Do you love Caribbean travel and soft sand between your toes or the taste of smooth rum and getting lost in island beauty? If so, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to the Caribbean Castaways podcast. You are about to embark on a journey where you will learn about everything the Caribbean has to offer from the best beaches and places to stay to the best restaurants and things to do. Everything you need to know to get the most out of your vacation and become a salty Caribbean castaway. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your hosts, Caribbean travel bloggers, Rum Shop Ryan and Castaway Crystal. Hi there, and thanks for joining us for another edition of the Caribbean Castaways podcast. Castaway Crystal here with Rum Shop Ryan. How's it going, everybody? And today we're going to be talking about our favorite places to stay in beautiful Key West, Florida. That's what we mentioned in the intro. But yes. I th we Just in wanted, case you forgot. We wanted to tell you again because we thought my voice was a little bit too DJ voiced and I didn't want to get carried away because I easily get carried away all the time. Right. So today, again, like we said, we're going to be talking about places that we've been, that we've had a great time at, and then we have some that's been on our wish list of places we would love to stay. There's no shortage of awesome places yes, to stay. It's hard to pick. I mean, there's so so many hotels and all these nooks and crannies and these off streets, off Duval Street. I mean, I'm sure there's tons we'd, yeah. we'll never find there's, or see. But. There's little B&Bs. There's really nice oceanfront stuff. There's big resorts. There's luxury. There's economy. It's like this little bitty island holds all those bars and all of these really cool yeah. places to stay. I love it. Yeah, Key West is definitely one of the best places to visit here in Florida. Um, so we hope today will be super informative for you guys whenever you decide to start planning a trip to Key West. And if you like what you hear today, we would love it if you would subscribe and leave a positive review like Hibiscus007 left for us. She said that she has been an Instagram and Facebook follower for a long time, and she just listened to her first podcast ever today from the Caribbean Castaways, and she loved it. Thank you. She doesn't know what took her so long. She loves hearing about the new places, always looking forward to new beachy trips. The tips, perspective, and hearing about places they've been takes her right back. Kudos for evolving this into what it is. Well, thank you so much, Hibiscus007. We really appreciate it. Yeah, we, we do this for you guys. So, you know, it's all about helping you guys have a better vacation, whether it's, you know, in Key West, like we're talking about today, or whether it's in the Caribbean. It's really to help you guys see the islands, you know, and like we do, and maybe get off the tourist trail a little bit. And that's why I think some of these hotels we're going to be talking about today are super, super cool because they're not the big resorts, but the, the kind of these intimate B&Bs, some are haunted, Woo! some have maybe used to be brothels. It's going to be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So before we dive in, though, Ryan's got a little something that he would like to share with you guys. That's right. So we wanted to tell you guys, you know, just kind of reinforcing that that Caribbean preferred card is coming. And those discounts are rolling in every single day. So I've been posting those to our Facebook group, which is the Caribbean Preferred Card Facebook group. So you can join that if you want to see the type of discounts that are rolling in. But let me tell you, they are really, really awesome. So we're saving you guys, you know, $50 on charters. There's some 10% discounts on like luxury villas. So if you think about it, it's probably going to save you hundreds of dollars. 
So we're really, really excited. It's only a couple more weeks before we get these out to you guys. And we do want to let you guys know that we do love giving back and we really support, you know, the ocean and because we love the ocean so much and we want to help keep it healthy. And it took a lot of research, but we did find that No Shoes Reefs through Kenny Chesney does a really good job of supporting a foundation called the Reef Ball Foundation. So what they do is they create these concrete structures that are specially designed to um, promote reef growth. And they have these throughout the world in the Caribbean and places where there wasn't a reef or maybe the reef has died. They've put these things down there and life has come back up. So now fish are back in the ocean and that helps people who live off of the ocean, off of fish, you know, once where there was no fish, now there is fish. So we are super passionate about giving back and helping the environment. So every preferred card that we sell, we are giving $2 to the Reef Ball Foundation. So we're super excited about that. And again, just a couple more weeks before we guys can we, before we can get those out to you. As you can tell, I'm a little excited. Right. So yeah, that is coming up. That is the Caribbean Preferred card. And uh, yeah, I think I'm ready to go to Key West, Key Castaway West. Crystal. Let's take a stroll down to Ball. Let's do it. So the first hotel that we have in store for you guys is called the Artist House. Ooh. This one, we have a funny story with this one. Okay, so I'll give you some facts. The Artist House is located on Eaton on the corner of Eaton and Simonton Street, um, walking distance to Duval and all the fun things that you want to go to on Duval Street so you don't have to worry about getting a taxi or great driving. Location. It's a great location. Um, what I love about the Artist House, well, there's so much to love about the Artist House, but it's a bed and breakfast, and it was my first bed and breakfast that I ever got to experience, so that was a real treat. It is a colonial queen and style house built in the 1890s. Very old. Super old. And it is the home where Robert the doll lived. Do you guys know what? who Robert the doll is? Well, Crystal's going to tell you all about it. I was a little freaked out when I first heard about it. So trying to make this story short, we were doing a trip to Key West out of the blue one day. Ryan, it was like almost before, it was like between the meeting of the minds yeah. and some other holiday. Fantasy Fest. Fantasy Fest. Yeah. So there wasn't a whole lot to choose from. But the the, uh, the artist house was available. So I come home from work and Ryan's like, I, I booked us in this Airbnb <laughs> or in this bread and breakfast. I had no idea what it was. Called the artist house. And I'm wigging out. I'm like, oh my God, do you know what the artist house is? And he's like, no, like what's the big deal about the artist house? So I had to educate Ryan about Robert <laughs> the doll, which for those of you who don't know who Robert the doll is, is he is, he is a demonic doll that lived in the artist house probably the most haunted part of key west honestly that's the most Maybe. there's a lot of hauntings like, in key west <laughs> but robert's like super famous he is honestly um robert the doll is actually the inspiration for the movie chucky for child's play that doll because um legend has it that this doll was given to the little boy who lived in the artist house his name was um eugene and well, his middle name was Eugene. His first name is Robert. So Ro Robert Eugene Otto and a bohemian housekeeper um, did some black magic on this doll, made it demonic because um, I guess his parents didn't treat her very well. So she was getting revenge. And so this doll had a mind of its own. He could walk on his own. They said his facial expressions would change depending on what was being discussed in the room. They say they could hear footsteps up in the attic, right? When nobody was up there. Yeah. So they would hear footsteps and kids outside would see him moving across the, um, like the widow's peak. I just got goosebumps. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's terrifying. So I've been on, so I found all this out. I learned all about Robert, the doll on a, um, a haunted walk tour through Key West long before right before I met Ryan so it was just like it was so terrifying to hear I'm like oh my gosh we're staying here this house is so haunted but it it wasn't we were fine we survived <laughs> but to go on more about the artist house besides Robert the doll which it's known for mostly is that it's a gorgeous seven room bed and breakfast well done I mean it still has that historic feel oh, yeah. to it and um 
with all, every seven room, they have different names. Like we stayed in the garden room, but then it tells you what that room used to be. Like the garden room used to be the library and whatever the rooms used to be, they, they kind of educate you on that. So, you know, what room you're in that the family used to have. So I thought that was a really neat added addition to it. Um, but it was so funny with this house that, it, you know, it's, they're big, they're tall, but we never saw another guest mm -hmm. until the next morning for breakfast. So, you they know, they just all kind of came out of the woodwork. Yeah. They came out of nowhere. Like, Oh, we were sharing this house with people because <laughs> we never saw them. Um, but there's this beautiful backyard, like courtyard with a little pool, very lush yeah. and like lots of greenery. And that's where everybody kind of congregated yeah. to have breakfast. Where you can have your breakfast and they had lots of pastries and cheese and, um, make your own mimosas. But it was, it was a treat. It was a real delight to stay there. So definitely number one on my list is I highly recommend you stay at the artist house. And that was just kind of by accident. It was. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So cool, cool. Um, the next one on our list, we're going back in time again, and that is the Angelina Guest House. So the Angelina Guest House, that is located on Angela and Thomas Street. So about a block, kind of a block adjacent from the famous Green Parrot Bar. The cool thing about the guest or the Angelina Guest House is that it used to be a brothel. So I stayed at the Angelina guest house probably about four five, six years ago. And I went down on a solo trip on the Key West Express and I rented a bike and I, it was during the songwriters festival. And so I just kind of putzed around the island going from, you know, kind of place to place to venue to venue to watch all of these amazing like Nashville songwriters. And I was um, by myself, so I didn't need a whole lot. So I stayed at the Angelina house, which I didn't really know was kind of a, um, I won't say a hostel or, you know, it's kind of a dorm slash hotel. So the actual room I stayed in didn't have a ensuite bathroom. It was one bathroom shared on a floor, just like a, a college dorm. And so that was a little different, but they also do have regular hotel rooms with the bathrooms there. And it's really, really nice. It has a very lush backyard with a pool, hammocks, fountains. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous setting. Just make sure that, you know, if you do want your own private bathroom, uh, make sure that, you know, online or when you're booking that you have one of the private rooms and not one of the dorm rooms. But, um, and one of the, the cool things all the rooms are named after women and because it used to be a brothel, they say the women's names were some of the, the, um, the ladies of the night that worked there, I guess. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's kind of a cool, but it, it was kind of weird because like I was by myself and so I'm just at night laying in the bed and I'm like, man, if these walls could talk, it's like, <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of <laughs> weird, but like, it's, you know, that's just part of the, uh, the history of Key West. So that was the Angelina guest house. Um, I do highly recommend it. It's a beautiful, beautiful property. You know, again, probably a hundred years old, very, very cool place, but yeah, check it out guys. All right. The next one on our list is called the marker and you can find the marker. It's near the Key West Harbor on William street. And this hotel, we went for the first time. We took Ryan's parents down to Key West for the first time. That was fun. And um, it was actually the first time I got to experience a rum shop Ryan sighting. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> the, right. I don't know if the manager's still there, but the manager at the time recognized Ryan and gave him a nice little bottle of rum. Yeah, some Key West legal rum. Yeah, yeah. so that was very sweet of him. We really appreciate that, and that yeah. was a fun to see. Um, but the good thing about the marker is because it's so close to the marina that if you're taking the Key West Express, you can just walk from the, where they drop you off on the Key West Express terminal, from the right dock, the it. terminal, and you can just walk to the marker. Yeah, it's like it's only like two blocks away. And if you guys do love the Key West Express, we do have a discount Woo! for you on the Caribbean Preferred card. So get the card and we'll give you a discount on the Key West Express. Yeah. So the marker is a very it's a luxury boutique type hotel it was gorgeous it's super gorgeous yeah. it has three pools which i only remember one yeah. <laughs> but that's key west for you but it has three pools and um they have a pool bar yeah and it's just gorgeous gorgeous um the room we had kind of overlooked the pool but i think they have some other buildings or something that it kind of partially overlooks the actual harbor yeah which is a real treat yeah so if you guys know where the schooner wharf bar is 
you know, it's right there on the dock. So where all the, the fishy, uh, excuse me, all the fishermen charters and all that kind of go out. It's the marker is literally right behind Schooner Wharf. Right. And um, a good thing about them, too, is the marker is trying to do this very much sustainability and staying green with um, some things that they're doing at the hotel, like using refillable shampoo bottles. Um, they have reef safe sunscreen near the pool. Love it. And a reusable welcome cocktail cup. So I that's didn't nice. know that, Castaway <laughs> Crystal. She always educates me all yeah. the time. <laughs> and um, also right now. For COVID, a lot of these hotels are having some massive deals right now. Unfortunately, sometimes a lot of their amenities aren't being used because of COVID, but it's probably why, too, you're getting a big discount. Um, Like, for example, if you look on the Markers website, they have like 30% off if you stay for three or more days there. So just a little tidbit that hotels are cheaper right now. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great, great place. Very, very beautiful. Very lush. Um, more, um, more upscale, more yeah, luxury for that's, sure. That's very luxurious and like, but a boutique feeling because it only has like 98 rooms or right. something like that. And just the style, it's very modern, but not cold, but just like fresh and clean, yeah. you know? Um, and also it's walking distance to all the fun stuff on Duval. So you don't have to get a bike if you don't like biking like me. Right. You're really <laughs> good on a bike. I'm terrified. <laughs> There's too much chaos on in Key West for me to ride a bike. It's just not going to be good. We'll, we'll tell some <laughs> stories about that another time, but they are hilarious. Yeah, so we highly recommend The Marker. All right, next on our list is the Old Town Manor. So this goes back to one of those old B&Bs again. And this one is located on Eaton and Duval Street. It's more on Eaton and then about half a block or maybe like one or two buildings up Eaton Street. But it's, you know, just a gorgeous, you know, probably 80, 90 year old building. It maybe only has about, I'd say, nine or 10 rooms in it. There is a really cool room in there where the, uh, the there's a big tree that they kind of built the inn around. And so when it rains or water will actually go down this tree and but it goes right right back outside. So it's it's a very cool property and I do highly recommend it. I only stay there I think one night or two night two nights, but um yeah, Old Town Manor, check it out. All right. Next on our list is a huge favorite of mine. I've stayed there twice. It's called the La Concha. Yeah, I can't miss that one. La Concha is right on Duval Street on the corner of Duval and Fleming. And a fun fact, last I knew it was the tallest building in Key West. I believe so it still is. It's great for sunsets. You can't miss it. Yeah. And one of the things I loved about this building was it's another historic building. Apparently Hemingway and Tennessee Williams have stayed there and have written some of their most famous things there. Um, and I love there's a rooftop pool with a pool bar. Speaking of uh, famous people, did you know that Buck Riley also lives there? Oh, I was like, who? <laughs> Buck, <laughs> Buck Riley is the character in our friend John Cunningham's books. So he's this guy. So all these books, Green to Go, Red, Right, Return. There's seven of these books. So if you guys like Island Adventures, there's this main character called Buck Riley. And he lives in a uh, in a place right there at La Concha. And it kind of takes you through Key West. And it's, it's really, really cool. But sorry, I just one more random famous like- person. Kind of fictional. I know that name from somewhere. I'm like, who is Buck (laughs) Riley? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, check out John Cunningham's books, guys. You'll love them. Yeah. Um, And also, La Concha has a luxury spa, which I believe it was being built the last time I was there. But I've seen some pictures, and it looks fantastic. Yeah, since last time we were there, like, their whole pool area. And it's it's been brand new for quite a while, but, like, I haven't stayed there since it's been brand new. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's really, really nice. Yeah, it's a nice setup. Yeah. Um, when you book with them, La Concha gives you a welcome cocktail. Thank you. Super fun. <laughs> um, and also too, downstairs, um, there's a, a wine bar, which is called Winos, which of course I had to frequent and go there, <laughs> which is really nice. Just so you just leave your hotel and it's right there attached to the hotel is the Wino bar. They also have a smoothie bar there and they also have a Starbucks for those of you who need your coffee in the morning. Um, also, La Concha has parking, Yep. and I believe, I don't know how much it costs, but it does cost to park there if you are driving. And it's good because parking is a disaster yes, down there. Yes, there's very so. few places that have parking or garages, but they are one of them yep. if you're staying there. 
Um, highly recommend La Concha. It, like I said, it's on Duval Street, so it's around everywhere you want to go. It's walking distance to Hemingway's house almost. And Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville is like right, right next there. door. Yeah. And also, again, to give you an idea of how cheap things are right now, I paid over $300 a night to stay there. And right now we just saw, we're airing this on August, what's today's date? The 10th? Mm-hmm. Um, it's August 10th right now and looking right now that they were having, um, the room rates look like it was 121 a night. Super, super low super for cheap. La Concha. But again, also keep in mind it's COVID. So a lot of things, a lot of amenities can't be used right now, but if you just want to get away, you just want to hang out there and spend some time, you know, something to look into. So we changed up our hashtag guys. So usually it's hashtag just go. And we changed it now to hashtag just go responsibly right <laughs> wear the face mask that's six right. feet apart oh i can't stand it all right the next one on our list is a pretty cool one so this is the lighthouse hotel formerly the lighthouse court hotel um this is a property that's located right on whitehead and olivia and it is very very cool because it gives you a lot of different options they have these super cute cottages. I believe there's like three or four like private cottages. And then there's a main house. It has a pool, cornhole boards out there. Very lush, very tropical. And if you can tell by the name, it's located right next to the Key West Lighthouse. So you can climb up that thing, get probably one of the best views on the island. But probably even cooler, in my opinion, is it's located right across the street from the Hemingway house the Hemingway Museum house and full of cats so I know Crystal loves that like, I'll be across the street see you later <laughs> it's <laughs> it's super cool I, I love um, everything Hemingway so if you guys are uh, into Hemingway and lighthouses the lighthouse court is uh, lighthouse hotel see I can't get it straight because I'm so used to the court but it's located right next to both of those main landmarks so you'll you'll love it and next on our list of recommended places to stay in Key West is the Speakeasy Inn. So most people probably think, like, okay, I won't say most people. So there is a bar on South Duval Street called The Rum Bar. And it's a very small bar. M- most people probably stay up north the, no, on the north side where Tony's and Sloppy Joe's and Irish Kevin's are. But if you go all the way south, there's this little bar called The Rum Bar. And it has probably the best selection of rum on the island. And it is part of the Speakeasy Inn. And this little inn probably has, again, about, I'd say, 11 to 12 rooms. And um, it has this nice little area out front right on Duval. You can grab your drink and just kind of sit and watch the world go by. Lots of people walking up and down the sidewalk, so it's a great place to people watch. But the Rum Bar is probably one of my absolute favorite bars in Key West. There's just something special when you sit behind the bar. The bartenders are always so charismatic. Uh, a good friend, Bahama Bob, used to work there. He used to make the best drinks. He's he's moved on now. He's making rum at Papa's Polar. But um, yeah, it's just a great, great place. And the Speakeasy Inn is one of those other places in Key West that has so much history. Yes. And I believe Crystal loves fun facts. I love fun facts. And that's what I'm here for. Um, So the Speakeasy Inn was actually the home of, if I mess up his name, I'm sorry, but the home of of Raul Vequez. Um, He was a cigar selector at the Gato cigar factory but his true passion was rum running between key west and cuba sounds like my type of guy and the great thing about his house was that his home was one of the few homes that actually had a cellar a secret cellar in the house because it's florida most florida homes don't have cellars or basements so his house was the speakeasy in yeah probably (laughs) so it was a secret cellar that nobody knew about that he could do all these rum runnings and all this like illegal stuff without anybody knowing And another fun fact is that, I don't know if you want to call it the lattice, but like the guardrail, it it tells you at those times that that was a house that had uh, gambling going on or alcohol was allowed. It was kind of like this little sign for the speakeasies to let people know. I know exactly what you're talking about. So 
guys, when you go to Key West and you're standing right on the sidewalk looking at the Speakeasy Inn and the rum bar, you know, on the railings, on the upstairs, and you'll see this, like, kind of what Crystal mentioned, like, this little, like, wood trim. But inside the wood trim in a negative space, you'll see, like, spades and clubs and hearts. And so that kind of gave it away, like she said, you know, oh, wow, there's probably some gambling there or maybe some illegal booze to be had back in the days of prohibition so there's just so much history down there and that's why i like to speak easy in yeah it's a very cute quaint historic house and even though ryan's been there i would definitely like to have a chance to stay there one day it looks really well, nice I'll, i mean you just walk to the rum bar it's so cool yeah I'll stay there <laughs> all the time yeah all right so that was the places that we've actually stayed now here's our wish list of where we would love to stay on key west yes Number one, the Southernmost House Hotel, which is located at this one of the southernmost points of Key West. It's right on the corner of Duval and it's literally like South you, Street. It's you can't get any further south on no, Duval. It's like right there. The southernmost point, the little buoy where you go take pictures at, it's like right around one the corner. Block to the right. Yeah. yeah. So if you stay there, super convenient. You can get there early for a picture without the crowd because that line gets long for that little buoy. Yeah. The southernmost house is a Victorian style home built in 1897 that actually hosted over 20 presidents. No so, kid. Like, lots of history. That's another fun fact. I love fun But like <laughs> th- this house is just so ornate. I mean, it's on postcards. It's like one of those favorite, like famous landmark type places. Like if you see like a famous, awesome cathedral, Victorian, like you said, house, it's probably the southernmost house hotel. Yeah, and it is on. It is a waterfront hotel, yeah. but there really isn't a beach there. There's a pool, and there's a pool bar. And one thing I just found out <laughs> when I was looking it up is that this place is an adults-only bed and breakfast. Oh, it's my favorite place in the world. Woo! Like, I'm sorry, but that's our favorite kind so, of place. So, <laughs> so you're telling me there's no kids screaming and jumping in the pool? Nope. <laughs> wow. Got to look this place up. Um, we've... Explored the property a little bit. We had a couple of drinks at their pool bar. That was really nice. Um, The bartender there actually gave me a postcard with a little bit of history uh, about the house. Um, Weddings are always performed there because it's just so it's so elegant and so lush. It's just I can't say it more. It's just a gorgeous property. I know it's (laughs) It's so breathtaking and it's on the water and it looks like that and it's on Duval, like the very southern end of Duval. So you guys want to go see this house and like we went in there kind of like just as tourists just to kind of like look at it and we saw that there was a bar in the back it's like well let's you know let's walk just to in, say we were there take a look <laughs> and like you're, you're walking through there is like man we have to stay here so yeah it's on our wish list and so that's why we wanted to tell you guys about it yes and um and the location though it's great because there's the southernmost beach bar right across the street yep. so if you do want a little bit of beach action the southernmost beach bar or beach beach cafe does have beach loungers that you can kind of sit there and enjoy the water That's a nice and little beach, yeah. it's a great restaurant for breakfast I, we've, we've only done, been there yeah, for breakfast breakfast, breakfast is great there but i'm sure yeah. their lunch is just as good and i'm not i'm sure they do dinner yeah they do. um and then also down the road, just down the street, one of my favorite places is the Butterfly Garden. It's right <laughs> down the, you know, just right steps away. Yeah. yeah, right up Duval. So um, it's still a great location, even though it's not to the heart of like Mallory Square or all that. But there's still lots to see on the southern side sure. of Duval Street. Yeah. And so the next one we're going to talk about is another one of those. I think we get suckered in by these the old styles. So this one is called the Amsterdam's Curry Mansion Inn. And this is on the north side of the island at Caroline and Anne. And we always walk by it like because we're usually staying down by the marina a little bit. And so when we're walking down towards Duval, we pass it like every time. And we just kind of like. You're just your jaw drops because it's such an elegant oh, it, property. It's a Georgian revival mansion, if you know what those look like. But it just. It's all white. It's all white. It's just, just so classy, so historic looking. Every time we pass by, I'm like, I just want to stay there. <laughs> but if you don't stay there, they do have tours that you can actually just see the premises. So that's kind of cool that's if you cool. don't stay there. The mansion has 28 unique guest rooms, and it was built in 1869 by a man named William Curry, who is known to be the first self-made millionaire in Florida. You know, you and these fun facts, you're like, I don't know where you get Might all this not information. not impressive. <laughs> it's just called Google. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's so cool because, like, it 
there's again, we're just drawn to the history of Key West. Yes, you know, Key West has a party scene and all of this, but when you get down, you know, into the the like the guts of Key West, there's so much history, whether it's with Cuba or rum or anything like that. Jimmy Buffett, all the artists, it's like the ghosts. I mean, what's not to love about Key West? I'm getting a little excited right now because it's been like over a year since we've been. So I think it's been longer than that. So we're definitely in needing to go take a trip back down there. Yeah. Um, another great thing about the Curry Mansion that we found out is that it's pet friendly, which is really hard to find places that are pet friendly these days. What about cats? Can you take cats in there? Well, they're pets. <laughs> I would <laughs> think so. Um, and also a really cool thing about this place. So we were just, I was looking on about reviews and what people thought of it, which Kind of has pros and cons, but one of the really cool places or thing that everybody seemed to like is that they have a happy hour with music near their pool deck, and wow. it's a way it's a, like a cocktail hour for the guests to get to know each other. So kind of like a little social that they do every day for the guests, which I think is a really nice perk that if you stay amazing. there. Yeah. Let's, can you can like un, not guests like crash it, or is it just for guests? Just for guests, I believe. Gotcha. Um. And then the name that it's called the the full name is Amsterdam's Curry Mansion Inn. Yeah. So Curry was the original guy who owned the house and built it, and then the family, the Amsterdam family, eventually bought it in the 1900s. And I believe there's family to this day that are still running it um, of the Amsterdam family. So there's some facts for you guys. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, so th- you know that's one that's still on our list. And like I said earlier, you know we we walk by it every time and we're like we gotta go and so i'm sure you guys have seen it if you walk the streets of key west and probably have thought the exact same thing and then right across the street like there's a bigger house and then there's a smaller house right across the street that says curry mansion inn and i believe that's maybe part restaurant with a couple other rooms to stay in but the main one is called the The amsterdam amsterdam's curry mansion inn right so yeah very very cool spot one of these days we're gonna get there can't wait so the last one on our list, and this is on our wish list, is Ocean Key Resort. So this one isn't one of the old mansion type places, but this one is right on the water and it's right on Mallory Square. So if you don't know anything about Key West or Mall- what Mallory Square is, this is basically where the cruise ships park, but it's the most important thing is it is the sunset party. So every night at sunset, people flock to Mallory Square and there's vendors selling art and there's, you know, sword swallowers. There's cats walking tight ropes. There's jugglers. There's guys who do flips. It's like it's literally a circus at sunset. And it's just one of those things you have to do uh, when you're down in Key West. But right next door to Mallory Square is Ocean Key Resort. It has a amazing little outdoor bar and it's right on the water. It's Crystal and I have sat at the bar before and just kind of watched the boats come in and out. We actually just posted a picture on our Instagram channel of a sign like right on the pier with all these different directional signs. And I believe that was taken at Ocean Key Resort. So yeah, I, I think it really has everything. It has a, it's a great resort. It's on the water, has a great bar scene, and they also have great live music as well. So that's another one on our wish list, Ocean Key Resort and Spa. And that kind of wraps up our wish list and our recommendations to all the castaways out there. Yeah, we hope you enjoyed today's show. We hope you guys took some notes so you know where to go next time. Yeah, and if you do have any questions, hit us up on Instagram um, at Caribbean Castaways and send us a direct message if you're heading down to Key West. Um, We'd be happy to point you in the right direction on any hotels or restaurants or bars or whatever you're doing. We've been there quite a bit, so we're happy to help. That's what we're here for, guys. Um, Again, thank you for joining today. Um, Again, don't forget, if you leave a review with your Instagram handle on it, we will be happy to contact you to send you a free Caribbean Castaway sticker. Boom. Yes. And don't forget to grab the Caribbean Preferred Card. It comes out in just a couple weeks. And if you would like to sign up for early access, you can go to caribbeancastaways.com slash card, C-A-R-D. And that is a wrap on our Key West hotels. It's yes. sad. I wish I was there right now. I know. I'm like, can we just go tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. And we'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.